Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My dad let my aunt take over my childhood room after promising he'd keep it for me. Now I've left and refused to forgive him. I had always been close with my mom. She was my best friend, confidine, and biggest supporter. I remember how she used to sit with me on the couch reading me my favorite stories and tucking me in at night with a kiss on the forehead. Even as I grew older, our bond never faded. We would spend hours talking about anything and everything from school to boys to our hopes and dreams for the future. So but when she passed away, everything changed. It was like a piece of me was missing and I struggled to find my footing without her. I felt lost and alone and I didn't know how to move forward. My dad tried his best to support me but I could see the pain in his eyes every time he looked at me. We both missed her terribly and it seemed like we would never be able to move on from the loss. He tried to fill the void by cooking my favorite meals and taking me on walks around the neighborhood but it wasn't the same. Our relationship had always been different from the one I had with my mom. We were close but there was always an unspoken distance between us. He was the provider, the protector, the one who fixed things when they were broken. But after my mom died, I saw a vulnerability in him that I had never seen before. He cried openly and talked about how much he missed her. It was like we were both experiencing the same pain but we didn't know how to share it with each other. As time passed, I started to notice other changes in my dad. He stopped talking about my mom and began spending more time with his friends. He started dating again which was a shock to me. I couldn't imagine anyone else being with him, especially not so soon after my mom's death. But he seemed happy, and that was all that mattered. I tried to be supportive, but it was hard. I felt like he was moving on without me, leaving me behind to deal with my grief on my own. As for my parents' relationship, it had always been strong. They had been married for over 25 years, and they were the epitome of a loving couple. They laughed together, cooked together, and supported each other through everything. Even when my mom got sick, my dad was her rock. He was always by her side, holding her hand and telling her how much he loved her. So but after she died, it was like their love had died too. My dad couldn't talk about her without breaking down and he started to avoid anything that reminded him of her. But I think it was too painful for him to face the reality that she was gone. I miss them together. I miss their laughter, their silly inside jokes, and the way they would dance together in the kitchen. And it was like a piece of my childhood had disappeared and I didn't know how to get it back. As I packed my bags for college, I couldn't help but feel like I was leaving behind a part of my family. But I hoped that maybe, just maybe, things would get better over time. Before I left, my dad sat me down and made a promise to me that I desperately wanted to believe. He promised that he would keep my room exactly the way it was, like a shrine to my childhood, so that whenever I came back to visit, I would have a place to call my own. I know how much this room means to you, he said, his eyes misty. And I want you to know that no matter what happens, it will always be here for you. I felt a flicker of hope. Maybe things wouldn't be so difficult after all. But as the weeks turned into months and the months turned into semesters, I began to notice that my calls with dad were getting shorter and more infrequent. He would always be rushing to get off the phone, citing work or other obligations. And when I came home for breaks, I noticed that my room wasn't quite the same. At first, it was little things. My posters had been taken down and my bedspread had been replaced with something that was clearly meant for guests. But I could deal with that. It was like he was trying to make the space his own. And I could understand that. As I walked into the house, the familiar smell of my childhood hit me. But as I looked around, nothing was the same. The photos on the walls had been replaced with ones of my dad and my aunt. The living room furniture had been rearranged and I couldn't find any of my old family photos. My heart sank as I walked towards my room, expecting to find it just as I had left it. But then I stopped in my tracks as I saw my aunt walking out of my room with a smug look on her face. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. My room, the place where I had spent countless hours reading and daydreaming, had been transformed into a dressing room for my aunt. My bed was gone, replaced with a vanity table and a plush armchair. My books and toys had been replaced with racks of clothes and shoeboxes. The walls had been repainted in a shade of pink that made me want to retch. My room had been completely gutted. I stood there in disbelief, staring at her with tears in my eyes. My aunt had never been a part of my life growing up and now she had taken over the one place that was supposed to be mine. My relationship with my aunt has always been distant. She was my mom's cousin and we only saw her on occasion at family gatherings. I had always found her to be cold and aloof and she never showed any interest in getting to know me. As I stood there trying to process what had happened, my dad came up behind me. He had a smug look on his face as if he were telling me that he had moved on before me and I knew that he was the one who would allow this to happen. Dad, what's going on? I asked him. My voice trembling with anger and hurt. I'm so sorry, honey, with a grin on his face. I don't know how to tell you. Your aunt needed a place to stay and I thought it would be okay to let her use your room while you were away at college. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. How could he have let this happen? My room was the one place where I could escape from the world and now it was gone. I turned to my aunt and my anger boiling over. How could you do this? I shouted at her. This was supposed to be my room. How dare you take it away from me? As I stood there staring at my aunt in disbelief, I could feel my anger bubbling up inside me. How could she just waltz in and take over my room and how could my father let her do it? I turned to him, my eyes blazing with fury. Are you dating her? 
I asked, my voice trembling with rage. His smug expression quickly vanished, replaced with a look of guilt and shame. I didn't think it would bother you, he stammered. She needed a place to stay and your room was just sitting here empty. I cut him off with a sharp wave of my hand. You promised me you would keep my room the way it was, I spat. You promised me you wouldn't let anyone else touch it, and now here she is, taking over everything. My father looked down at the ground, unable to meet my eyes. I could tell he knew he had messed up, and he was too ashamed to even try to defend himself. I took a step towards my aunt, my fists clenched at my sides. You have no right to be here, I growled. This is my room, and you have no claim to it. She looked at me with a cold, hard stare, and I could see the satisfaction in her eyes. I needed a place to stay, and your dad offered me your rooms. It's not my fault that you weren't here to use it. Her words were like a slap in the face, and I felt a surge of rage course through me. Without even thinking, I charged towards her, pushing her out of the way as I stormed into my room. As I looked around at the pink walls and the racks of clothes, I could feel my blood boiling. This was not the room I had grown up in. This was not the room my mother had decorated with so much love and care. This was a mockery of everything that had once been important to me. Without hesitation, I began tearing everything apart. I threw the clothes on the floor, ripped the shoeboxes open and smashed the vanity table to pieces. I was like a tornado, tearing through the room with a ferocity that surprised even me. My aunt and father stood in the doorway, watching me with a mix of shock and horror. But I didn't care. They deserved to see the destruction they had wrought. They deserved to see the pain they had caused me. As I finished trashing my room, I turned towards my aunt with a malicious grin on my face. I questioned her in a sickly sweet tone, asking if she still needed a place to stay. She trembled in fear and stepped back, her eyes darting towards my father. Turning to him, I looked at him with a mixture of anger and betrayal. I asked him if his whore was worthy of taking my mother's place. I questioned him if this was the reaction he wanted to see from me, his daughter who had always been supportive of him. My father's smug expression was now replaced with shock and guilt. He stuttered and stumbled over his words as I screamed at him that I had let him do whatever he wanted and had tried to be supportive. I told him how much I wished he was dead and my mother was alive instead. Tears streamed down my face. I watched as my father's face contorted with pain and remorse. I didn't care about his reaction. All the years of holding in my emotions and trying to be the mature one had finally caught up to me. I had nothing left to lose. As my father tried to me, I backed away, shaking my head in disbelief. I couldn't bear to be near him or my aunt anymore. They had taken everything from me and I couldn't forgive them. In that moment, I realized I had to leave. As I grabbed my bags and stormed down the stairs, I could hear my father's voice calling after me. Wait, please, let's talk about this, he pleaded. But I couldn't bear to listen to him anymore. I pushed past him, not even acknowledging his presence, and made my way to the door. As I reached for the doorknob, I felt his hand on my shoulder trying to stop me. Please don't leave like this, he said, his voice breaking with emotion. But I didn't want to hear it. I yanked my shoulder away from his grasp and turned to face him. You had your chance to make things right, I said, my voice cold and flat, that you chose her over me, over mom. You choose to destroy everything we had as a family. My father looked at me with tears in his eyes, his face contorted with pain. I know I made mistakes, but I love you, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. Please don't leave like this. We can work things out. But I was done with his empty promises and hollow words. I shook my head, feeling a deep sense of sorrow and anger welling up inside of me. No, dad, I said firmly. It's too late for that. I can't forgive you for what you've done, and I can't forgive you for what you've allowed her to do. And with that, I pushed open the door and walked out into the night, leaving my father standing alone in the doorway, his eyes filled with tears, his heart heavy with regret. Update one five days later, as I sat in my college dorm room, trying to focus on my studies and forget the events of the past few days, I heard a knock at my door. I opened it to find my father standing there looking haggard and defeated. Can we talk? He asked his voice shaky. I hesitated for a moment, but eventually nodded and let him in. He sat down on my bed and I perched on the edge of my desk chair, still wary of him. I just wanted to say that I'm so sorry. He began his eyes downcast. I don't know what came over me. I was so lost and confused after your mother died and I thought I could move on with your aunt. But I see now how wrong I was and I'm so sorry for everything I put you through. I listened to his words, but it was hard to believe that he could change so quickly after years of neglect and betrayal. He told me to come back home with him. What home? I asked him bitterly. You kicked me out and gave my room to your mistress. You threw away everything that mattered to me. My father winced at my words and I could see the guilt etched on his face. I know I messed up, he said, but please just give me one more chance to be a better father. I promise. I promise I'll do everything in my power to make it up to you. He told me that. He had broken up with my aunt and told her to leave immediately after I had left that day. He looked at me with tearful eyes and spoke in a sorrowful tone. He told me how sorry he truly was and how he had become so obsessed with the idea of moving on that he had lost his basic common sense. But I couldn't bring myself to believe him. How could I trust him after everything he put me through? I remained skeptical, but something in his voice made me want to believe him. He sounded genuinely remorseful and I could see the pain in his eyes. He pleaded with me to come back home and let him make things right. 
I don't know if I can forgive you, I said slowly, but I'll give you a chance to prove yourself. Just don't mess it up again. My father nodded, tears streaming down his face. Thank you, he whispered. I won't let you down. OP is obviously going through a lot. Her anger and pain are justified here. NTA, her father fueled the fire that was already burning in her. The room held profound memories of her mother. NTA, I think OP needed more support and comfort from her father, which she didn't receive. Her father started dating so soon and then her aunt came into the picture. The dam was going to burst for sure. It was just a matter of time. Next story. I finally visited my oldest sister after a year of not seeing each other and I was shocked with the way she and her husband were treating my two-year-old nephew. On the first day I got there, I noticed that my little nephew was literally wrecking the house and none of his parents would say anything. He even had a tiny chair he dragged around to do his mischief. My sister said that it was okay, he has a right to his own home, and he can do as he pleases while in there. I objected and told her he should also be the one to pick up after himself, but she said it's okay and I dropped it. I just kept my stuff locked into my bags. When we went out to the mall, though, my nephew would still go inside shops and pull things from their place and mess with all kinds of products. My sister never cleaned up after him, and when I tried to do it instead, she would stop me and say that it's the employee's job. I disagreed with her and refused to enter any stores with them anymore. I would just wait outside to avoid the embarrassment. But what finally broke the straw is when we went to the park and there's a part of the playground dedicated to older children like teenagers. One for the kids' school age and one for toddlers, preschool children. My nephew, of course, went to the teenager's section, and he climbed up this dangerous rack that's about 4.5 feet off the ground. I told my sister how this is a bad idea, and it's really too much to spoil him like this, and she snapped that it was none of my business and she's tired of me nagging her, and she went and sat down. I was nervous and kept hovering around in case anything happened, and bam, my nephew really lost his footing and was about to fall down. I caught him and put him safely to the ground. That's when my sister came growling at me what my freaking problem is, that he's fine and knows how to minimize the fall. Even if he falls, and if she knew there was even a little danger, she wouldn't have left him there. I yelled at her back that she was absolutely unhinged, and that I've never seen parents like them ever before. She screamed at me again to just leave and I was also fuming and left. My belongings were still at their house so I went there and told my brother-in-law to please get them for me. He asked me what was going on and when he handed them over and I told him he should hear about it from my side and left. Later my brother-in-law and sister, as they were using, we sent this super long message in the family group chat stating how children are just tiny humans and know a lot more than we give them credit for etc. etc. with a rolling eyes emoji at the end. Several members liked that message and I don't know. Should I have watched as the child fell and minded my own business? NTA from stopping him falling. She's completely wrong that two-year-olds know how to fall. It sounds like your sister has been reading the wrong parenting books. Letting children be destructive with no gentle instruction to clean up after ourselves is going to be a big issue for her as he grows up. Parenting is hard and people get a lot of conflicting advice, but she should not be leaving a mess for service personnel to clean up everywhere they go, and nor should she be neglecting him when he is about to injure himself. NTA, I'm an advocate of adventurous play, which means I allow children a certain amount of freedom and risk. It helps build confidence. The thing is tough. It's always a controlled risk, and a risk is different from a dangerous hazard. They play on structures designed with their age group in mind. I'm not hovering saying be careful every 20 seconds, but I am close and engaged. Your sister is taking a reasonable philosophy and seemingly using it to abdicate responsibility and avoid teaching her child. This isn't even touching on how disrespectful it is to allow a child to make a mess in a public place and expecting employees to clean up after the kid. So no, I don't think you were the a whole for not allowing your nephew to injure himself or for objecting to how they treat store employees and later distancing yourself. Next story, I-27F was a bridesmaid at my older sister's wedding last week. The wedding was beautiful and everything seemed perfect until the reception. During the reception, the maid of honor, who has been my sister's best friend since childhood, gave her speech. It was emotional and all. But then she made a joke about how I was the family screw-up who finally managed to do something right by not messing up my bridesmaid duties. Everyone laughed, but I didn't find it funny. For context, I've had a rough few years. I struggled with my mental health and dropped out of college for a while. I've since gotten my life back on track, but it's still a sensitive topic for me. Hearing that joke in front of all our family and friends wasn't funny at all. My sister's best friend and I never really got along, but still I never expected something like this from her. Especially, the day wasn't about me at all, then why bring me up in the speech? I tried to stay composed, but I felt the tears coming so I quietly left the reception and went outside to collect myself. My sister followed me out and asked what was wrong. When I told her she said it was just a joke and she meant nothing bad. I tried to go back inside, but I just couldn't and I ended up leaving the wedding early. My parents understand why I was upset, but my sister is angry with me. I do feel terrible for leaving, but I also feel like I have the right to feel hurt and humiliated. Edit. 
I said nothing at the moment because I didn't want to cause a scene on my sister's special day. And I can't reason with her right now because she will just ask me if I haven't been taking my meds lately because that's what she does when she's angry with me. So I'm giving her some time to maybe realize how her best friend's joke was out of line. Edit 2. Someone asked me if my sister's best friend and I argued before slash did I give her a reason to do this. My sister's best friend and I never went past high. She told me before, a few years ago, that she, in general, doesn't feel comfortable around someone struggling mentally because in her head God only knows what they're capable of. Since she said this slash to this day I just tried to avoid her. Edit 3. Hi, thanks to everyone who took the time to comment on my post and gave their opinion slash advice without being too harsh. I apologize if my update is messy or confusing. I'll try to cover everything, but I don't know when to add context quarter for clarification. When I was 17, I was diagnosed with PTSD and later with depression and anxiety. Since then, I don't like it when someone touches my head, especially my hair and the back of my head slash neck. My sister knows everything. During our conversation, my sister did most of the talking. At some point, I felt like my sister had called me just to blame me again without trying to understand my perspective. When I tried to talk, she put her hand on the back of my neck and pulled me toward her with each sentence as if to say, do you understand or okay? I hated it and felt irritated. I honestly kept thinking if I pushes her away, would I be in the wrong? Why would they just call me mental and tell family I got physical? I tried to leave, but she insisted that no one was leaving until we sort this out. She told her best friend to just apologize. She refused and reminded my sister that I was the reason her husband got angry at her on their wedding day because I couldn't take a joke and when I tried to explain why, edit. I told her if she had focused her speech on the bride slash groom, then maybe he wouldn't have had a reason to be angry. She refused to listen and brushed my words off. She said, yeah, whatever, sorry. And I was glad it was finally over, and as I was about to leave I heard her say, can't take a joke that everyone knows is true. The both of them laughed, but my sister stopped mid-laugh and apologized. I didn't say anything and left. And I think I've had enough. I mean, I know I've had a few rough years. I dropped out of college for a while, fine, but I've since gotten my life back on track. He, my parents helped me through it all and never made me feel like a burden. At first, I was on some strong meds that made me feel tired slash sleepy most of the time. After a while, I started to feel a little better with therapy and my family's support. During that period, it was me, my parents, and my brother. My sister was three hours away for a job and used to visit sometimes and would often bring her best friend along with her. Darling back, I don't want to say she hates me, but I know she felt ashamed to have a family member struggling with mental health issues. I don't know how to explain this. I've made up might have decided to go and see for now. If my parents and my brother who were there when I was going through it all never made me feel that they're ashamed of me, then why would she? And I'm still on some meds but feels much better than before. I have a stable job, my own place, and friends who loves me for who I am. I can say I'm proud myself a little. I love my family to death and tried to maintain a relationship with my sister all these years. But I'm trying to improve myself, not constantly be reminded of what I was a few years ago. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.